Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 15. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at some simple physics for our playable character, this little guy right here. Uh, we're also going to look at creating a fade out screen and we're also going to switch assets from one scene to another, i.e. the fade in screen we're going to bring from the old scene to the new scene. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So I want to focus firstly on the physics. Uh, if you remember in the last tutorial when we had our playable character here, he could basically uh, collide, run through any, anything, just run through the building. We can see the inside of the building here and he can just run through things and it just looks silly. So let's actually sort that out. Now the way we do that is with a collider and realistically we don't need to use a complex collider to make all this work just fine. What we do need to do is go to our contract killer which is our character remember. We need to go to add component if it lets me click it it's been a little bit slow and we need to type the words col short for collider in the search and it will bring up a multitude of colliders. A collider in its simplest form is the box collider and all that does is just put a collider around your object. Yes it looks a little bit big right now as we can see this uh, green highlight is what the collider is. Now if we were to press play now we would, well, I'll show you what happens as a matter of fact, so we would be able to still collide through because Although the collider's there, there are still other things that we need to actually apply and modify on this collider to make it work. It's no good just applying a collider, you need to modify and add extra components. So in the case of this collider, what we'll need to do is change the position on the center. You can see if we add it, it's kind of just brought it here and it's colliding with the floor down here because it goes through, as we can see. So we need to bring this collider up. So we can do that by bringing it up like that. Now I'm going to bring it to probably, actually it looks like about 0 0.5, maybe a little bit higher. There we go. So it's not quite touching the floor but it is touching the floor. It doesn't matter too much because we're going to add some extra components to this now to make it work properly. So if we go to add component and get rid of that we need to go to physics down here and then although we have the colliders there we need to attach something called rigid body. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail what rigid body is because we will be dealing it uh, at a later point anyway in much more depth but the basics of what a rigid body is is just a way of basically allowing us to control or rather have gravity at this moment in time. So if we were to press play now and try running with our character we may end up with a glitch as we can see. If we try running here yes we can stop but it's still not how we would want it to be. As we can see we're glitching a lot more than what we should. There we go. So the problem we can also have is it may get to a point where the camera goes a little bit crazy like that. So if this happens, which it inevitably will, if you do that, that just looks crazy. What we need to do is on the rigid body up here, it may look like this, we need to click on constraints and we need to stop the rotation occurring on the X and Z axis. So where it's got freeze rotation, just tick X and tick Z. So what will happen now is it will prevent it from going in all crazy angles unless it is the Y axis. But because we're turning the character on the Y axis, it doesn't make too much of a difference. That's just fine for us. So what I'm going to do now is take the terrain and I'm going to bring it up just a little bit because the gap here just looks a little bit too high. It's just not quite happy with how that gap is. So I'm going to bring the terrain up just a little bit probably down a little bit from there actually. So three, 0 0.38, in fact 0 0.34 should probably do it. So what I'm going to do is on this street now, this sidewalk, 
we have a mesh collider attached. Now I'm going to disable that mesh collider. Uh, I'm going to add component and add a box collider. So again, we can go to physics and add a box collider. It's not going to make too much of a difference right now, but again, in later development, it probably will. So we can see now our guy is stood on the actual sidewalk. Now he's on the road. So no matter what we do, we're not going to collide with the building. So we stop going through it. Excellent. So it same applies for pretty much anything that has a collider. So you can see we can't go through the lamppost, which is fine. We can't go through the bus stop, but we can seem to go through the bin. So the bin here requires, yep, you've guessed it. So let's go to this bin over here. Or trash can, whatever you want to call it. And let's go to add component, physics, and box collider. So the colliders are something that are going to be massively important um, within this game now because you've got to think of all the things, possibilities that our player could collide with. So we have to stop it from happening. So let's try and collide with the bin. And we can't. We just kind of run into it. So it's worthwhile now just making sure that everything you have here you don't collide with because it would look silly wouldn't it really unless you want to collide with the bin and make it look daft i guess everyone's different anyway uh, that is the basics of physics and that is how we stop our character from running through walls through cars that we'll inevitably do through uh, the traffic lights through pedestrians everything so we're going to come back to physics because they are massively important in any game and whether you want them to be silly and daft you know because we put the uh rigid body as freeze rotation you could turn that off if you wanted to it just depends what kind of game you're making but for this game like i said we're going to have the rotation frozen on the x and z so i'm going to save that scene and if you remember quite a while ago in our um original scene that we did when we created the first intro scene which is this one here we created a fade in and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, not cheat, but I'm going to take that fade in right there, which has the animator attached to it. And this is a classic case of being able to take something like UI from one scene to another and use it seamlessly. And all we need to do is take that fade in, hold control, press C, and let's go to our open world. And obviously we need that canvas in place because if we don't have that canvas in place, we won't be able to use any UI. So game object, UI, let's just have text for the sake of it. Uh, we can get rid of that, paste in our fade in, drag it onto the canvas and press play. Hopefully Unity is not so slow. And there we go, there's our fade in. So we're using the same mechanic that we created in a separate scene and we're using it in this scene and that is the beauty of being able to transfer assets between scenes in Unity. It really is as simple as that. So on that matter, let's now create a fade out because if you remember in our intro scene, it just kind of stops and loops that last animation of the camera over and over. So we need to create that fade out and it's basically done the exact same way as fade in. All we need to do is game object UI and raw image. Let's stretch it across the entire scene. Uh, right click, rename and fade out. And color is gonna be black. And let's zero everything out so it stretches across the entire scene. And we'll set the color as zero alpha remember the zero alpha means that it is completely transparent so we see straight through it and let's prepare this now with an animation so let's go to our animation intro scene and make sure we are on fade out click on animation create and this will be fade out anim and we'll do it over the course of two seconds, I think. So let's press record. And at the first keyframe, let's set the alpha back as zero. So we set one and zero. Remember, it sets that first keyframe. 
Two seconds is going to be the 120th frame because we're in 60 frames a second. So 120. So by that 120th frame, we want our alpha to be 255. And then stop animation. And then let's go to the animation file, which is this one. And then untick loop time. And all we need to do is turn off, fade out. And we need to modify the script which controls our whole sequence. And in sequence holder, we need to go to the AO3 voice subs. And we need to add in that extra variable at the end. Now, it doesn't matter too much what we do with it after that fact, because once we get to the point where we want to fade out, we'll fade out. And anything we do after that isn't going to matter because the animation isn't looped, so we stick with that black screen. Uh, what we will eventually do, well, I'll say eventually, we do it pretty soon to be honest, is bring these two scenes together. So we'll have the ability to go from our scene, which is here, and then transfer ourselves to the open world. So we'll be doing that. Uh, so here we are. Now it's time for me to return that favor. After that, what we'll do is we will declare a variable up here and public game object fade out semicolon and we'll wait for another let's say two seconds we'll see how that works and then we'll have fade out dot set active true semicolon and save that script so obviously that now means that we have to add our fade out into the variables over here, which we already know how to do. We're on the 15th tutorial now, guys. It's simple, this stuff. Uh, so drag and drop. Uh, let's press play and check out our fade screen in action. So I'd love to see what you guys have made so far as well. I'd, I'd really like to see how you guys are getting on with this because I do like to see what people are developing from sword. things I've but shown Enzo, them. I swear it wasn't me! You squeal on horse face, you're sleeping with the fishes. Lorenzo, please! My name is Steve okay, Lorenzo. so far so good. Three years ago, Jimmy Horseface tried to have me whacked. Set me up. Now, it's time for me to return that favor. There we go. So... That's all working quite nice. Now, that's pretty much uh, how I want it to go. So, you could transfer that fade out if you wanted to to the main scene. I guess that's entirely up to you. There's no saying that you can't. Uh, we probably will eventually anyway. Um, so, what we're going to do next tutorial? Well, next tutorial, I think we're going to look at some more audio. So, we'll bring in uh, some, at least something for our scene. Um, we'll bring the scenes together and we'll kind of construct more of this story uh, so we don't just go from one scene to another and think, well, what's going on? So we're going to bring a story together and then start exploring this open world and what we can do with it. So guys, until that next tutorial, you get all your physics working on every object you need to. Hopefully you've started building up your city a little bit more than just this block that I have uh, just you know quickly used. Uh, yeah, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.